few people on the globe know more about wolves than Dave Meech, a world-renowned scientist and founder of the International Wolf Center in Ely. Well, I've studied wolves now for 61 years, I guess it is. I liked animals that uh, have to hunt for a living. And of course, one of the top hunters in North America is the wolf. Meech started researching wolves as a Purdue University graduate student. At that time, 1958, wolves were considered vermin, um, generally, and that is they were not protected anywhere in the U.S. or Canada for that matter. Uh, actually, probably they weren't really protected anywhere in the world except for national parks or something. The, the government had um, a, an entire agency to try to wipe the wolves out of most of the U.S. And they succeeded. I mean, the only, uh, by the time I started, the only wolves left in the 48 states were uh, the ones in Minnesota and the ones on Isle Royal. The general attitude of the public was, you know, why are you gonna study these, you know? And um, you should just kill them off or get rid of them. And I said, look, I'm a student. This is my, I'm, I'm going to be a scientist and that's what science does. And we don't make judgments about animals. We just study what they do. When I was finishing up uh, my graduate, my undergraduate work at Cornell, I just I fell into a wolf project. That is, um, there was a professor who had funds to study the wolves and the moose on Isle Royal in Lake Superior, and he asked me to do the study. And uh, so I was primed. I mean, I said, sure. I said, this is a you know the largest carnivore in North America. Sure, I'll do it. Isle Royal is a 210 square mile island in Lake Superior, sort of a uh, world of its own out there, a total wilderness national park. The only large carnivore out there is a wolf, and the only large prey animal there was a moose. Isle Royal was a very simple system, one predator and one prey. I used a small aircraft, had a pilot there, and uh, during the winter, and uh, we flew around and found wolf tracks and followed them, was able to watch the wolves interact. There was a pack of 15 primarily and I was able to watch them interact with about 131 moose. The upshot of that was uh, the wolves had a very low success rate, uh, roughly around 7%. So of all the moose they were interacting with, you know, some of the moose detected the wolves before they were very close and they ran off and the, the wolves never got near them. Um, others um, stood their ground and let the wolves come right up to them and sort of fought off the wolves. Some just outran the wolves. But in the end, uh, generally, it was the ones that ended up running that some of those, the wolves were able to catch and kill. I learned that the, the, you know, the wolves were sort of uh, ending up with the old and the sick, the young and the weak and that kind of thing. In 1986, Dave accepted a National Geographic assignment to study Ellesmere Island near the North Pole. The island's white wolves had never been hunted or trapped, so they were tame. In early spring, his plane landed at a weather station where he stayed for 10 days. I walked out the door of one of these old buildings and there were six or eight wolves. <laughs> and um, so I uh, started following them around with a snowmobile, found out that I could follow them around with a snowmobile and they tolerated me in that. I went back in uh, early July when I knew they'd be denning. And, um, I had a, a three-wheeler at that time rather than a snowmobile. So um, I went back there and managed uh, after several days to, to see a female uh, that I could tell was nursing. I could see her nipples, basically. They followed her over a period of days. She'd lose me and I'd follow her the next day and then, uh, to the den. I found the den of pups and I realized these wolves let me be there. So I came back the next day with a tent, set up a tent about uh, roughly eighth of a mile, maybe a quarter mile from the den. Finding that den was, uh, you know, it really was a highlight of my life. The National Geographic assignment continued through the summer of 1987 and resulted in the film White Wolf. But Dave kept coming back to follow the same pack for 25 summers. Finding the pack's den could be challenging because they changed locations. In 2007, the wolves moved to a den that Dave couldn't get to because of a large fjord. The question I had is that, okay, I've been doing this for 20 some summers. Am I gonna get enough out of it when I can't be near them and can't follow them? I can only look for them, look at them from a couple miles away with a spotting scope. 
is this really worth coming back for? Or could I start studying them in a new way? Dave was leading other wolf studies in Northeast Minnesota, Denali, and Yellowstone National Park using radio and GPS collars. In 2009, he finally decided to collar one of the Ellesmere pack. Instead of living with wolves, from now on, he would track them on his computer. It was terrible hard after 25 summers, but I was getting older, my grandkids were learning how to drive and, and all this stuff, and I realized, you know, I can't keep doing this. I didn't need to be there any longer, and I, I knew it was time to just give it up. In 2011, Dave hired Shannon Barber Meyer to assist him with field research. She had worked with Dave more than a decade earlier as a graduate student. Her work involves during the summer um, running, uh, teaching a crew and working with them in live trapping wolves, putting radio collars on them, and, and uh, taking blood samples and irritating all that, and then uh, following them by aircraft. And some of them have GPS collars so we can watch them on the, on the screen. The, the overall backbone of that project since I started in 68 is, is to monitor the population of the wolves in that area and try to see what changes when the population changes and why it changes. Why are there big swings in it and that kind of thing. Today we're going to be going on a aerial telemetry flight. We're going to be searching for wolves and white-tailed deer that have radio collars on them. We are going to be first listening if they're in the area. We'll pick up the radio signal. We're going to try to locate them. We're going to home in on them. And then from the air, we will try to see how many wolves are traveling with the collared wolf. So over time, you get this long-term population trend of the pack wolves in our study area. We can learn other things as well. The collars have sensors on them that tell us when the animal hasn't moved for four hours, which usually means the animal's dead, or the collar has been chewed off sometimes in the case of wolves. And so then we can hike into that location and necropsy it, do kind of like an autopsy to figure out what the cause of death is. We can also track wolves as they form new packs or as they disperse. Um, we can locate their den sites, potentially even investigate kill sites where they've killed maybe moose or deer, things like that. From the air, Shannon locates wolves from two packs, each with a colored wolf, and records their numbers, behaviors, and colors to help identify them later. What researchers have discovered about wolves and their prey is they tend to keep each other in check. When moose numbers started declining in 2009, the wolf population declined a few years later because they had less to eat. Then both populations stabilized. One of the things that sets Dave apart from other researchers is his singular focus and his determination, his persistence. There are many people that have studied wolves. Dave wasn't the first, um, he won't be the last, um, but he has been studying them nonstop since um, the, the 1950s when he started his PhD work on Isle Royal. Now there's this long-term data set that is the longest data set anywhere in the world on a predator-prey species outside of the Isle Royal National Park um, study that he began his PhD work on. Throughout his decades of research, Davis found the wolf is often misunderstood. There are two, two extremes in terms of people's outlook on wolves. There's a, the extreme where people really thoroughly hate the animals and um, where uh, the other extreme where they think wolves just can do no harm. On one side, people say that the wolves just kill for sport. It's very dangerous for wolves to attack most of their larger prey. And so they don't do it for fun or for sport. They do it because that's what they have to do to eat. Even when hunting in a pack, each wolf is still smaller than its prey. And Dave has documented wolves being killed by deer, moose, and elk. But wolves will kill multiple animals when they have the opportunity, like during hard winters when deer are starving and slow. But they can't eat them all at once. So they'll come back until the carcasses are clean. People come along in snowmobiles and they find six or eight deer killed by wolves and only one or two of them eaten and they say, oh, the wolves were just killing for sport. Well, it really wasn't for sport. Wolves can be a problem on farms and ranches. Wolves don't make any distinction between a, a cow and a deer and, and a moose. They're all just uh, hoofed animals that are vulnerable if they, 
if they can, um, if the wolves can overcome whatever uh, defenses they have. Well, it turns out that sheep and cows and that don't have the defenses that the other, uh, the wild species do. They're not as alert, uh, they're not as strong, they don't fight as hard. And so when wolves find them, it's easy pickings. Some states reimburse farmers if they can prove their animals were killed by wolves. Since they are on the threatened list in Minnesota, problem wolves can be killed by the DNR, but not hunters. In western states, there are wolf hunting seasons now. While wolves in some parts do have a bad reputation, they have a role in our ecosystem. They control the deer and the moose populations and that kind of thing. And with hunting dropping, you know, because hunting's been the other control on some of these things, uh, wolves could become more important in that respect, yeah. And there's a chance that um, they might help minimize this uh, spread of CWD, the chronic wasting disease, which has been a problem in, in deer and uh, elk out west. The, the future of wolves, I, I would say, looks very good, in, not just in the 48 states, but throughout the world. Wolves are increasing all across Europe and, um, and um, across pretty much the northern U.S. They, um, they just recently got into Colorado. Dave continues to work part-time studying wolves in northeast Minnesota and Yellowstone, which he visits two or three times a year. I'm, I don't know, 15, 17 years past full retirement. It's been a great life, and, a, and the, um, I've collected a lot of data, and um, not, I haven't published it all, and I feel a strong obligation to get as much of it out as I can. So as long as I can, that's what I'm going to do.